Crafteria. Welcome to another video. I'm so glad you're joining me today. I'm going to show you how to work on diamond paintings. I'm using this kit that I got from BB Craft and this one has butterflies. I'll show you the other two kits that came with it. We have the Sea Life and we also have owls. I'm gonna start with the butterflies today and I will show you what I do when I get a kit and how I sort it out and get the kit going and actually how to do the actual um, diamond painting. So this kit's a little different than others because we have six different butterflies. A lot of kits are just one big like painting or picture. But I'm going to go ahead and work on one of the butterflies. But first I have to sort out these drills. These are called drills. They are the little gems or the diamonds that you get when you make a diamond painting. So they come in these cute little packets. And they're all labeled to go along with your painting. Now you can keep them in these little bags. You can sort them in little zip top bags, however you like. It does not matter. Do them any way that you like. I personally like to use something like this. These are little tiny containers and I put each color in and I label it with a label um, so I can find them real, really easy. So that's what I'm going to do today. I'm going to sort these out and then I'm going to see if there's any particular order. We have some letters here. We have C, D, E, F, G, H. And we have an A and a B. So we have the alphabet right there. So I'm going to keep those in order. And then here we have numbers, and we have numbers two through nine. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and put the alphabet um, together first, and then I'll come back and do the numbers. And I always look on here to see how they have it described. And they do have the letters of the alphabet and the numbers on there. So that's how I'm going to label these. You can use um, pill boxes or whatever you have handy that will work. So here I have. Um, a through H. And I'm just going to label these here. A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H. And I'm going to go ahead and just stick the labels on the container. This little kit that they give you has this cute little tray and it has this little pen here and it has some wax. I'm going to set the pen and the wax aside, but I'm going to use this tray just to help me um, fill these up. And I want to make sure that all of these boxes open and close properly before I fill them up. So for A, I'm just going to snip the corner off and put that right on top of the little tray and just pour these in. And 
then the reason I do it over this little tray because, well, you see, I make a mess. So I'm going to go ahead and pick up all these extra ones and stick them in there. Normally I don't make that bad of a mess. There we go. So A is in there. I'm going to do the rest. I'm going to do the same thing for the rest of the letters. Okay, I have all of the letters done. Now I'm going to do the numbers. And we have number two through nine. All right, I have those labeled. I underlined my six and my nine just to make sure I don't get them upside down. And then I'm going to go ahead and do the same thing with these and fill these up. I'll be back in a minute. Well, I am back and I have all of my letters and numbers sorted for this particular kit. I will say that I did it in a very basic way. I sorted them out based on the letter or the number that is going to be represented on the actual pattern. Each one of these has a code written on there. I don't know if you can see, but some of those numbers may represent the DMC code. And DMC is the um, color codes that they use for embroidery floss. And they do correspond to the same um, drills or diamonds. And um, a lot of people will sort them by that code. And that's if you're going to save them and, um, you know, use them for your own or mix them together from kit to kit. So I just wanted you to be aware of that. I wanted to show you the very basic way. This is the way I do it. I don't sort them by DMC code, but I might start doing that with my leftovers. I have several kits that I've completed and I they always give you extra drills and it's kind of nice um, to be able to sort them by the same color and by a universal code. I just wanted to let you know that um, in case you're one of the experts out there watching me do this, you're probably like, no, 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 no. Tell them about the DMC code. Well, there you go. You don't have to do anything with the DMC code. It is just there for you in case you want to use it in the future. They have charts. You can buy charts on Amazon or different places and, um, you know, work that way. So you'll get your canvas, and I always like to try to flatten my canvas. I'm going to call this my canvas. Most of the canvases that you get will be a huge sheet, but of course these are just these little pieces. Normally when you're working a big sheet, I, I'm right-handed, so I usually start in the bottom right-hand corner and work over and up, and I try to do the same number or you know the same color as much as I can within a small section. So in this case I'm just going to focus on this bottom butterfly. And if you look at this bottom butterfly, I'll hold it there for a second, you have um, a lot of different you know letters and stuff and here we have the number eight at the bottom. I want to make sure it's an eight and not a B. Yes, because a B is this second color. It's that purple color and an eight is this um, teal color. So it's definitely the eight. So then I'm going to take some drills from number eight and I'm going to just pour some out in my little tray and I'm going to shake my tray. Now the drills have a flat bottom and a um, shaped top. You can see some of them are upside down and the flat bottom showing like this one here is upside down and that has a flat bottom. And then 
this one here is right side up and it has, you know, it's shaped like a gem or a diamond. So you, sh you can shake that just to kind of separate your pieces. There's little grooves in the bottom of the tray. And then I'm going to take my wax and I'm going to peel back the protective cover of my wax. I'm just going to stick my tool straight down in the wax and then it just picks up this little piece of wax. I'm going to set my wax aside and then I'm going to zoom in a little bit and I'm going to take my tool and just pick up a gem that's right side up and then I'm going to stick it down here on the number eight. There we go and I'm going to do that to all of the number eights. And then you can see that I'm filling up those number eights. I'm going to zoom out so I can have it closer to me. It's really hard to do it that far away, but you get the idea. I will catch you when I'm done with all of the number eights. And I, I did want to say that you barely have to touch the um, drills to pick them up and then you just set them down just straight up and down and the flat bottom will stick right to the paper like that it's super easy once you do a couple you'll be like wow that's really cool and then if you get a bunch that are upside down just shake your little tray and more will fall into place and they will be automatically right side up. And the reason I start, especially on a big canvas, on the, you know, if you're right-handed, you're gonna start at the bottom on the right, is that way, if you're working up here and you haven't put the drills in and you rest your hand on it, you'll stick to the paper. It is very sticky. So I have all of my eights in, so I'm going to turn my paper, I'm going to put my um, protective coating on, and I'm just going to push them down just to make sure they're all in there really well. I'm going to cover this while I put these back in, just in case they see how they fly around. Just in case they fly around, I don't want them to stick to the canvas. And then I'm going to look and see what the next number is. I'm going to go ahead and do the letter H. That's the, the next one in line. And I'm going to just pour out some of these. And that's a pretty light blue. And you don't want to put too many because you want plenty of room for them to go right side up. And then I'm just going to stick these everywhere I see an H. And you can see it's color coordinated so you can pretty much tell by glancing at it where they're going to go. I don't have to look up at the top part because I know that there's no blue up there. And these have round drills. Some of the patterns have square drills. All right, I have all of the H's filled in. And my next number is nine. So I wanna put my H's away. Now every kit you get I've never seen one come without it. Comes with the wax, the tray, and the pen. And 
you can buy fancy kits with all kinds of fancy trays and a whole bunch of fancy pens, which I do have those. Um, but once you get several trays, um, you know, saved up, you can use and have multiple colors out at once. Just don't get them mixed up. So my next color is going to be nine, which is this very light blue. And I'm going to go ahead and work on number nine. I'm just going to fill in all of my number nines. All right, and you can see how they sparkle like jewels. They're so pretty. I'll put my nines away, and then I'm going to do the middle, and I think that is number five, his antenna and his body. The background is color coded, so if you are not exactly in the very center, it's okay. As long as you cover up that number pretty much, you're good. All right, there's my body and antenna, all the number fives. I only poured out a few that time because I was hoping to be exact <laughs> just for fun but it's harder when you don't have as many because um, you have to keep shaking it to get them to be right side up and my next one I'm going to do number six which is along the bottom here and that's this light orange some people use a light box up underneath. Um, these ones are really, that sounds really like good English, these ones. This kit's really easy to see. There are some that are very hard to see, especially because a lot of the kits have so many um, different colors. They need more, you know, a, a different type of symbol other than a letter or a number to identify the colors. And sometimes they're triangles and squares and all kinds of different shapes to tell you which color to use. And sometimes they are really, really hard to see or tell the difference between them. I sometimes use a magnifying glass and a light box. And what I'm gonna do here, I did it backwards on the other one. I'm gonna work from ones that are touching other ones out. That way I make sure I have room to place the other ones. I don't get, you know, boxed in. This is good to do listening to your favorite movie or watching TV or just having it be quiet. I like to take these on vacation. They're easy to transport. They're relaxing to do. You don't need a lot of room to do them. I really like to do jigsaw puzzles on vacation, but sometimes this ends up working out better. Okay, I have all of the sixes I think that was six all of the sixes done so next I'm going to do F as in Frank Foxtrot is what we would say in the ham radio world there aren't that many F's not very many Foxtrots all right, number or letter C is the next one. I'm 
there's what we have so far. And then I'm going to go with A. And I forgot two of the sixes, so I need to come back with two of those. Let's put the A's away. And fill in those last two sixes that I missed. All right, and then I'm going to just push down and make sure that they are all adhered really, really well. And what you'll do if you have a big kit is go over it with a brayer, if you have a brayer. There we go, that butterfly is done. And these pull off, they pull up their stickers. So I'm going to go ahead and just leave it down right now and then use it as a sticker on a card or a project. I will do more of them off camera. I wanted to show you that and I will be back with a finished project using that. Okie dokie, I finished the diamond paintings of these little butterflies. They are pretty and they were a lot of fun. I did open the other packs to check the numbering system and they do not match. Like for example, number or letter A may have been blue on one and it's green on something else. So I can't reuse the same numbering system. So what I think I'm going to do with the other packs is just keep them in the little baggies um, since it's such, such a small area rather than, you know, move them into the plastic bins, or the plastic um, containers. So I did go ahead and leave those in there. I can use these um, pieces for crafts or a shaker box or something else later on down the road. But I do want to use one of these and make a card with it just so you can get an idea of what you can use these for. It was a lot of fun putting those together. So I went ahead and went in my scrap drawer and I found these two pieces of paper. They don't go together. They're from two totally separate collections of paper, but I thought they looked well, looked good together. I have a card base and this really pretty bright green ribbon. So I'm going to go ahead and um, measure up my card and see where I want to cut my papers. I have a pencil, so I'm going to turn this one over and mark it on the back, kind of where I want it. Right about there. I can see the mark. You probably can't. Pretty much in half. I'll make it at two and a quarter. And let's see the width. This is going to be pretty close to where I want it. So I'm going to leave it like that for a minute. And then I'm going to decide how wide I want this one to be. I'm going to turn this one over and kind of just eyeball this. and make a mark. All righty. Oh, 
Okay, so when I do two pieces of paper like this, I like to line them up on the card base, kind of where I want them. And then I take a piece of removable tape. This is Duck Brand Clean Release. It's painter's tape. It's very inexpensive for a really big roll. And then I just put that piece right there. I do need to trim off the edge a little bit, but first what I wanna do is I have the piece together on the front. I'm gonna fold it over and I'm gonna run a piece of double-sided adhesive right along there. It's my little trick. And then fold that back over. Use my finger to get rid of the extra adhesive. Then I can take this piece off. Just carefully pull that piece of tape off. There we go. And now I want to um, trim each edge. just to make sure both edges are even. There, that looks really good. Now I found this piece of green ribbon, this bright green ribbon in my stash. So I do want to trim it. I'm gonna use my new pinking shears to trim the ribbon. I'm gonna trim this other edge off too so it doesn't fray. These are so much fun. Thank you, Anne. I love them. And then I'm going to place this piece of ribbon. It is a grow grain ribbon. And I don't think it has a right or a wrong side. And I want more of this design to show. So I'm going to line this up right like that. So it covers more of the blue down here than the green up there. And I'm gonna fold my ribbon over on the back Line it up on here, make sure it looks good. Yes, that looks great. This card is simple because the hard work was done on that diamond painting. This is one of my favorite card designs. I think I made my first sketch, my card sketch using this design. It's just so easy. Two pieces of complimentary paper and a piece of ribbon or trim down the center with an embellishment. And then I thought this green and blue one would go really good, especially um, since there's green up here and blue down here, and then it, the butterfly is backwards. So I'm just gonna press that right on there. It's already self-adhesive on the back. And there, we have that card done. And if you wanna put a sentiment like happy birthday or something down here, that would be great. Otherwise, it looks great just the way it is. It was a whole lot of fun to make these um, diamond paintings and I can't wait to use the rest on cards. You'll probably see them in some upcoming videos. I'm gonna go ahead and work on the other ones and that way I will put these in with my stickers 
and that way I will have them when I want a butterfly sticker, an owl sticker, or a sea life sticker. So we have the owls and then the sea life. So much fun. This just was one of my favorite projects that I've done with BB Craft. I love their stuff. And this, like I said, I think was my favorite so far. I will put the links to BB Craft below. Please go check them out. They have wonderful stuff and their prices are very reasonable. You get free shipping on orders of $25 or more. So that makes it really nice. It's free shipping to the United States. I'm not sure about other countries. If you haven't yet subscribed to my channel, please do click the subscribe button and then click on the bell so you're notified whenever I upload a new video. I'll be doing at least one more BB Craft video featuring some of the other products that I got in this haul. Thank you so much for watching. I do appreciate you very much. And until the next video, you know what to do. Go get crafting. Bye-bye.